Welcome back. Today I thought we'd have a little look at the optical comparator. I've got uh, a little problem that's cropped up that I need to measure and this is the ideal bit of kit to do it. So uh, let's have a little look at this. Believe me, I know this is not the sort of piece of equipment that most engineers, model engineers or DIY CNCers would, would have. And believe me, uh, I completely understand that. I have only got this one because I bought it in a local auction for scrap. Uh, basically, it was, it was laying outside, uh, upside down, covered in mud. And, uh, uh, well, I'll show you. There's a, a little video sequence I made of rebuilding this. Um, uh, so, uh, effectively, this has only cost me, blimey, uh, about the $50 pounds mark. Um, so it's not a, not a fortune by any stretch. That's the only reason I've got it because it is it was basically scrap. Uh, having said that, it's a very very useful piece of equipment for some things. Um, uh, measuring angles on it is is really quite uh, easy, and um, and also it's extremely useful for looking at cutters. Uh, if I show you, oh, I'll show you this one in uh, in greater. Uh, close up, but this is a um, this is a ten millimeter straight shank half inch router bit, and uh, I used this at work for a while, and it started to make quite a lot of noise. So uh, that's the usual sign that they're they're wearing out. So um, we'll have a uh, we'll have a look at this, and you'll see what I mean. That that uh, one of these things is extremely useful for for looking at problems, uh, particularly with cutters and measuring angles. So uh, let's have a look at this. Here it is in glorious close-up. It, it's a, a standard two-flute um, carbide half-inch shank end mill. No, half-inch shank root a bit. As I said in the intro, this uh, this particular cut has started to make quite a lot of noise, and that's uh, that's the usual sign that it needs um, replacing. So uh, I brought it home to have a little look at it, and uh, what we'll do is we'll just put it on the comparator, and I'll show you what's wrong with it. Right. Okay. We're just. I'm just going to lay it on the um, uh, on the top of these these two uh, posts as a dovetail. So I just lay it on the dovetail. Because of the uh, the nature of these things, you uh, you're going to get a hot spot down here uh, because it's uh, back projected. Um, the only way to avoid that is to front project, and uh, and these things don't work with front projection. Anyway, uh, that that aside. Here, here you can see here you can see the uh, the cutting edges, so uh, the light is shining past the uh, um, the cutter goes through through a lens to a big um, reflecting mirror in the back here and then onto the screen. So it's it's really simple. There's there's not a lot that can go wrong with these. So if we um, if I just move that cutter up, there we go, and I rotate the bezel till we're square with it, you can probably just see the cutter is not straight, it's actually bent and that's because it's worn out on the tip. Uh, and uh, if you look really closely, which is going to be difficult for you to do, uh, the, um, let me see if I can get that pin sharp, there we go, uh, the, the actual corner is rounded off slightly. Uh, so let's have a look at the other side. There we go. And uh, this one's in even worse condition because it, it's um, you can see that that's not flat at all, uh, and the corner's been rounded off. So uh, that tells you immediately that this cutter is knackered. So uh, uh, very useful. I mean, you, you didn't need this machine to, to be able to tell that this cutter was, was had it because it's, uh, uh, it's making a lot of noise. Um, however, this is a, a useful bit of kit for measuring things. I'll show you that. This is a, this is a V grooving tool, again for a router, and um, this is 45 degrees, but uh, if you didn't know that that was 45 degrees and you bought a, a whole box of these, you'd, uh, uh, this is a relatively easy thing to find out exactly what that angle is. If it, I mean, 45 degrees means that that's, that's a, a 90 degree included angle. That's easy to see with a t uh, set square. However, uh, if it was 23 degrees or something like that, a specialist 
uh, cut one, you wouldn't know. So uh, let's uh, just turn the light on and I'll show you. And uh, see if we can line it up. Right, there we go, that's good enough. Now, this is what we do. Uh, you can rotate this um, bezel, uh, this glass plate, until you get the, uh, the edges lined up. And um, funny enough, this is quite an easy one because it's 45 degrees. Um, so uh, the trick is just to read off the angle. Uh, this one is uh, that's 145 and then go around to this one and line that up again with the edge of the part and we're at 45 55 sorry and then we're at, so we're now at 55 so uh, the difference between the two is 90 there you go, we've measured the angle of this, of this cutter quite easily. The reason I thought I would make a little video about uh, this optical comparator is uh, I've got a, a project that I've been working on at work. Um, this is a, a 3D printed handle for uh, um, a product that we're, we're about to make. Um, and uh, it's, it's only half of it, but um, we've decided that, yeah, it's more or less the right sort of shape for a handle uh, we're going to make this a little bit smaller but um, in CNT machining this I'll get a pencil that show you uh, in CNT machining this uh, there's there's a, a few strategies you could um, it's going to be made out of 12 mil ply you could uh, profile follow like that and then move over and then continue back and do that for the whole thing in one or two directions which is, would give you a lovely look, but by gun would it take some time? And um, <clears throat> in business, time is money. So consequently, the best bet to do this would, uh, is going to be to actually use a round over uh, cutter to cut the, uh, the edges here. And uh, so I ordered this. And uh, it's, it's got the details it's a, a quarter inch shank it's 19.05 diameter that's three quarters of an inch in, in uh, old-fashioned money and 15.93 millimeter depth I don't know what that is but it's bloody odd uh, and the radius is 6.35 which is a quarter of an inch so um, the only thing oh there we go I'm going to use the cutter like that around the edge so uh, I can pocket out all of the all of the pieces in a rough shape before I use this, and then uh, just run this round a few times and uh, get the required shape. Absolutely fine and dandy, excepting I don't know much about this cutter. Uh, right, so I need to know the diameter of the end here, uh, so I can make a, a form tool infusion. I also need to know the distance from the, uh, from that cutting edge there to the point where it starts to uh, form the radius and uh, and the distance which I can I can work out by measuring the distance from here to here that's not an easy thing to do uh, you could do it on a uh, on a surface plate uh, with a with a height gauge uh, which would give you a, a good result uh, also the distance from there to there you could do that with a caliper and you could do the the diameter from there to there with a caliper as well um, but the optical comparator gives you an extra dimension that that's uh, uh, that's really useful you can actually check the radius of this uh, which is a, not an easy thing to do uh, unless you happen to have a lot of um, radius gauges anyway um, that's the, the, the problem. So uh, let's put it on the machine and we'll have a look at it. I've mounted it on a V-block and uh, because it's, um, uh, it's front heavy, so putting it on one of, the, one of these Vs, it just falls off. And um, yeah, don't really want to do that. So this is a good way of holding it 
square. Also, it's only lightly clamped, so I can rotate it. Right, uh, so uh, let me turn the light on, move it into position, and focus it up. There we go, slight bit of rotation. Good enough for this. So what we're going to do is put the corner of the cutter right on the centre. There we go. So that is right in the centre of the uh, lens. Every lens that I've ever come across has always got some form of distortion. So and the, minimum of, uh, the point of minimal distortion is through the centre of the lens. So if you use the centre point as your, uh, your measuring datum, then you've minimised any errors that are coming through the lens system. So, uh, so there we go, we're on the centre. Now we're going to just position the gauge, uh, the, the horizontal gauge, no, the lateral gauge, so that we can measure the distance from there to there. So let's compress this up a bit. There we go. And I'll set this to zero. Whoops, no, I won't. I've moved the cutter. So I'll move the cutter back so it's right on the centre point. Now zero the gauge. So uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just move this down till we get the right. There you go. Absolutely spot on. So I make that 9.4. No, 9.6. 9.6 millimeters. And I've measured this before. And I measured it at 9.5 and 9.55. So 9.6, bear in mind I'm not going ultra accurate with this. That's uh, pretty ideal. So now I can work out in CAD um, the, the exact position where the curve starts. OK, this time we'll measure the, uh, the distance for the, uh, the cutting end. Let's just make sure we're absolutely square. There we go. Right, I'll just move that up so that this point is right on the centre. There we go. Now I'll zero the gauge. There we go. And same thing. This time, oh, wrong way. So we'll count as we go. One, two, three, four, Five, six, and uh, one. There we go. We're spot on the centre, and uh, we've measured six point three five, which is exactly what it is. So uh, a very useful bit of kit. This. Um, I'll just try, see if I can show you how to use the. Uh, the radius portion of it, but that's that's going to be really difficult because it's it's really difficult for me to see it, let alone you. Right, and the the trick here is to line the um, uh, the radius up with these uh, incremental radiuses, and uh, the, I'm not doing this particularly well because I can't get access to the to the hand, uh, can't get my sticky fingers on the controls whilst uh, the camera's in the way, but um, you can. Uh, match that quite accurately and then uh, this is a times 20 scale so you could uh, work out what the radius is however oh, as I said I'm not completely convinced that this is a, a brilliant way of doing this because um, there are as I said there are always distortions in lenses so you will always have it's going to be an approximation 
the way to really do that, I think, would be with a radius gauge. But if you've got an odd size, you could do a comparison between a radius gauge and the thing you wanted to measure, and you could uh, put a piece of paper on and slap it over and uh, uh, and uh, draw a draw a line on with the right the correct radius. Uh, so you could do a comparison between the known radius and the radius you're trying to measure. Then you you'd be more accurate, I think. Right, so there we have it, a, uh, a quick little overview of my uh, very cheap optical comparator. Uh, quite a useful bit of kit, essential, definitely not. Um, there are other ways of doing these things. Uh, another, another way to, to do this particular cutter would have been to uh, photograph it. Photograph it, then import it into a drawing package, and uh, if you know certain dimensions, then you can work out the scale from the rest. Uh, maybe not quite as accurate as using this, in fact, probably not as accurate as using this, but um, uh, that would get you out of a bind. Um, the, um, the other thing with these is, uh, in the CNC world, they are very, very useful for looking at damage to teeth, uh, to cutting edges. I, uh, I, I'll drop a little shot in to show you exactly what I mean, but that's really difficult to see because uh, you, instead of using the surface, uh, you use this... Um, these light pipes that give you a, a profile. However, the the amount of light that comes through to the screen is so small that uh, the old Mark One eyeball can see it, but cameras struggle a bit. So, uh, so thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the and the bell and the like button. We uh, I appreciate the uh, the thoughts, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Take care.